Welcome to the introduction to Public Choice video series by the Center for Civil Society. In this video, we will be introducing you to the concept of public choice economics. In subsequent videos, we will go into the detail of how public choice economics shapes our understanding of politics and policy making. Public choice economics is a field in economics in which we take what we understand about how human interaction in society takes place, the understanding which is normally applied to humans in the private market, and we apply this understanding to humans in the public market. What emerges is an interesting dichotomy between how we think government functions and how they function in reality. But let's not get too ahead. We need to first understand what we mean by private and public markets. Private markets involve buyers, that is consumers, and sellers, that is business. There is a transactional relation involving goods and services between the parties. If we use the same analysis for public markets, the key players would be politicians, those who make the policies, aka policy makers, bureaucrats, those who implement those policies, and voters, those who vote for or buy in to the policies. In public choice, we use the same tools we use to analyze the behavior of buyers and sellers, that is, players in the private market, and use the same lens to analyze the behavior of people in the public market. We do this analysis using three distinct lenses, namely, one, interest. What is it that people primarily want? Two, incentives. What motivates them to do what they choose to do? Three, information. What do they know about what they choose to do? Before we dive into this theory further, let us take you briefly through the background of public choice. In 1962, US authors James Buchanan and Gordon Tullock wrote the book The Calculus of Consent and became the leading figures in public choice. They explained that in private markets, we understand that people act as individuals and we analyze individual needs and wants to understand why people behave the way they do. They went ahead to point out that why we generally assume and claim government took the decision or government did something, the government does not have a brain of its own. Individuals in the government think, plan and decide not the government as a whole. Hence, individual desires, interests, doubts, fears, and incentives also influence the decisions taken by the government. Public choice theory works on the following assumptions. People are people. That is, people in the government can have the same hopes, fears, dreams, desires, doubts, incentives as people in the private sector. They are not inherently more moral or understanding by mere virtue of being in the government. Everyone tries to economize. The same way that you, as a customer, want the best quality for the best price, everyone else is going around trying to get what is possibly the best deal. People have limited knowledge and benevolence. Public choice believes that while elections may be fought in the name of gods, Gods don't physically come to stand for elections. No one individual really has all the knowledge required to know what is best for everyone. Public choice economics has since its inception had a big impact on political and social science. It has changed the way we traditionally think about elections, legislators, bureaucrats and the way the political process actually works. Public choice is useful to determine and understand a lot of issues with politics so that we can ensure adequate safeguards to protect democracy. In future videos, we will go ahead and analyze the public market through the lens of the three eyes and see just exactly how public choice helps us identify problems in the political process and how we can resolve the same. 